Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 23rd. Wow, how did that happen? 2023, it is the weekend charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and gals for being here tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I'm humbled by your presence. Thank you so much. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I have a lot to say about that. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock in crypto picks. Hold off on your picks for now until we get to the live charts. And then, if you don't mind, just ask about them one at a time. I don't have a tremendous amount to cover tonight, so we should be able to get to everybody easily. I want to talk a little bit about where bad things happen. And this week, I want to use Landry Light, and that'll make a lot more sense. And right now, just spoiler alert, we're at one of those times where bad things are prone to happen. And if you're not familiar with these presentations I've been doing on this, it'll make more sense. I have a really quick VIX update. In fact, uh, this week in charts has a lot of charts. Imagine that. <laughs> There's some neurology and stuff I want to get into and carry over from my Trading Simplified show that I did this week, but we'll get to that over uh, coming weeks. Uh, a little anomaly in the 10% TFM system, and it's also something that happens when you're in a prolonged bear market, which is kind of cool, and I'll show you that. I know I'm a nerd. And just one second. I have a few questions that came in today. I put out a, a post uh, in Facebook earlier asking for things to cover tonight. And one was a further explanation on why I'm not buying these stronger stocks at this juncture. And I had a question on crypto volume, which sounds fairly familiar. We may have answered that a few weeks back, but it was a new question as of today. Maybe somebody else is asking the same question. There's a scream screen, as you know, the disclaimer screen. He tried to say, steal this money trading. Or as often summing up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff now between now and then. That's from my buddy, Greg Morse. All right. One thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, ever since, I guess it was probably Dave Keller talked about it. Uh, Guyard and Baleo wrote a paper, and I still haven't found the paper. But an excerpt from the paper is that bad things tend to happen below the 200-day moving average. And since I saw that quote, I've kind of been noodling with my stuff, noodling with the 200-day moving averages where I think that the research is based on. And just anything trend-related. So I'm going to talk about Landry Light here, but really anything trend-related has this where bad things happen connotation and also where good things happen too. So here's Landry Light. and for those who aren't familiar with Landry Light, and my apologies to those here, I think everybody here knows all about Landry Light, but it's just the lows greater than the moving average for uptrends and highs less than the moving average for downtrends. Pick your favorite moving average. For the TFM 10% system, I use the 50-day simple. A lot of times for my day-to-day -day trading, I like to look at a 30 EMA daily, and then every now and then I'll take a look at a 30 weekly. And here we have a 30 weekly, and one thing I noticed is after about five days of downside Landry Light, so it'd be five weeks where the lows, or sorry, five weeks where the highs are less than the moving average, which is illustrated below, and I have these little lines set at five, plus five and minus five, you could see bad things do tend to happen. We go back to the 60s and especially in the 70s, there were some horrible times where the market went down, you could see that the market went below that 30 on a Landry light basis, highs less than the moving average for a long, long time. In the mid 70s, ugly bear market back then. And some of these spots in between don't look that ugly, but if you were living through them and the market's losing 30 and 40 and 50% of its value, it, it sure seems a lot harder than it might appear on this chart. So there's another one, as you can see, in the mid-80s. Now, in 1987, we did get some downside Landry light, but it was too late on a weekly basis. And we're going to take a look at a daily chart here in just one second. But you can see a couple of times in between. And obviously, the big bear markets kind of stick out like a sore thumb, 2000. And then, of course, 2008 and 2009. So Back in late 2007, 2000, early 2008, you had a lot of Landry Light to the downside. Now, in between, you had some here and there. And I specifically remember 2015, 2016, 
even though we didn't come unglued and lose half of our value, or the market didn't come unglued and lose half of its value, it was just an ugly, choppy, sideways period. It's very difficult to trade. Now, such an indicator on a weekly basis was slow to catch up during the pandemic. And I'm going to flesh that out in just one second and show you a couple of things that, that weren't so slow. And of course, now we have the downside Landry light on a weekly basis, that is. And we've had mostly downside Landry light for the entire, well, going back a year, I should say, or since this bear market began. So I think that's kind of interesting that we are in where one of those bad things happened, so to speak modes now if we go all the way back to this should be 1987 yeah 1987 you could see we did have some downside weekly i'm sorry daily landry lights you had about six or seven bars of it and then the market rallied back up when the market touches the moving average remember the illustrator as i like to call them goes back to zero because there's no landry light as long as the moving average, as long as the price is intersected the moving average. We had a little green in between, but then it turned back down. And you could see after about five days or so of downside Landry light, the market began to accelerate lower. So it's okay to look at something longer term, but just make sure you look at the sh what's going on shorter term too. Now, if shorter term and longer term are both not looking so hot, then you have to prepare for where bad th where bad things happen. One thing that's kind of interesting is, and, and Greg Morse has done some research here. I need to see if it's in his book, Investing with a Trim. But he's done some research where as long as a market is near new highs, it tends to be okay. A market doesn't crash from new highs. I'm not going to wood. It hasn't crashed so far in history. Usually there's some weakness. I guess people who are in the know maybe start peeling off and, and some shares. And before you know it, the market begins to kind of slowly roll over. But you can see the top of this market was way back in the summer of 87. And it never did make new highs for months and months and months and months and months. And then all of a sudden it crashes and everybody's kind of in shock mode. But it rolled over for a long, long, long time. And if you take a look at bow ties and other things like that, you'll see that they were signaling a possible rollover too. Now, of course, as I've said before, and there's no guarantee that this will always occur, but based on my historical testing, and I haven't changed the system since I made it public, I forget how many years ago, four or five years ago, but going back and testing the system after I developed it, doing the back testing, I noticed that it would have gotten you out of every bear market in history right around that 10% level. In other words, when you're down about 10% from the 50-week closing high and below the 50-week moving average, that's the exit signal. And knock on wood, so far, it's gotten you out of every bear market, again, relatively unscathed. And if we wanted to count the weeks, let's just, well, you got this reversal bar, so let's count that it's bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this market took two months before it began to seriously begin to slide or begin to slide in a really serious fashion. So I find that kind of interesting. No guarantees, obviously, but it's pretty cool when you look at it. I know you're going to partner with me. Now, the pandemic was also one of those times, if you were looking at something like Landry Light, where the signal was kind of late, a weekly bow tie too. So something like Landry Light and a weekly bow tie on a weekly basis, at least, not a daily basis, because those are fairly quick to catch up. And the great thing about the Landry Light is you don't have to wait for a moving average across or some other type of long lag thing to happen as soon as price crosses below it, as soon as the high is below it, you have a gap between the moving average and price, then the Landry light count starts. But you could see, even if you had waited for just one bar Landry light, it was might have been a little bit too late in that situation. But do pay attention when you start having some, and let's say the market doesn't really crash in earnest, but you do start having this longer term weekly Landry light, kind of like we have now, you probably want to pay attention for 
the potential for bad things to happen. Now, getting back to the daily chart, if we count five bars, and I just made five bars kind of arbitrary. You could pick your favorite, however many numbers you want. I have a little two bar system that uh, seems to work okay in crypto and can work in, in markets, especially when they're in breakout mode. But pick your favorite number, you know, five or 10 bars as a possible trend developing. And you can see after about five bars here, we did have a little bit of pullback. And this is during the pandemic before the rollover. So anyway, I just thought I want to, I thought I would show you that. So there's the pan, there's the, the TFM 10% sell system. And this is something that I never thought would, would actually happen. This is kind of like a little bonus. I thought I was going to develop a longer term market timing system. And my intent for this system was to create something that would get you out of the way before bad things happened. Okay. Even before I, I ever heard of Mr. Gaed and uh, Vallejo, I knew that once bad things begin to happen, even worse things happen. Okay. So sometimes selling begets more selling. And I read an interesting quote today. I don't think I could fly, find it on the fly. But it's one of these trading neurology books. And basically, it talks how about how price can influence decisions. And, I, and that's, that's, that's going to dovetail in with uh, technical analysis, apologetics that I'm working on. But if you just think about it, I mean, we all know this anyway. Markets start selling off. You're getting ready to retire. And you're thinking, hey, I got a million bucks. That's going to be enough for whatever I want to do. But then all of a sudden you got 900,000, 800,000, 700,000 and and that is reflected in the market tanking, you might have to at some point pull the plug and and get out. So that's technical analysis right there. That's performance based investing. You might be forced out. And then a lot of other fun and games happen. Other people who swear they're they're, they're always buy and hold when the market's down 50 or 60 percent then they finally pull the plug and, and by the way not to get too far sidetracked here imagine that my phone's starting to ring again i'm starting to get texts from from concerned friends and relatives and man on the street uh who, who know, you know the man on the street who knows what i do They're like oh what's going on with the markets and it's like you didn't ask me back when was it uh two years ago when the markets were making new highs and I said, hey, watch this before the bomb blows up so you'll know some of these signals when they occur. Or just pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I'll let you know when things aren't good. And right now, things aren't too good. But anyway, to my surprise, this did catch up to the, the market pretty quickly. And I guess it's because it's performance-based, 10% from the 50-week closing high, which would be right there, okay? And it only took, let's see, you had one, to yeah, it triggered it within two weeks, actually one week of the um, of the all time highs. Um, two, okay, one two. So I thought that was kind of cool, and I know I'm a nerd. And then obviously we had some signals earlier. I keep saying this year, uh, in early 2022, we had our first sell signal there. We did have a little bit of a buy, which I I wrote off as as I, I actually didn't see it because it didn't look like it was above the moving average. And also, as I've said a thousand times, the designer's intent was to buy on strength and not weakness. And we had this weak bar here coming down to just above the moving average. And again, because I make my, as I've said before, again, because I make my moving averages kind of fat so I can see them, the fatness of the moving average actually was touching the low on the chart. But in reality, it was just a smidge above. So technically, that was a buy signal. And then there was a follow up sell signal within a couple of weeks right there. And we came close to a buy signal right here. You see the two lows above the moving average, but notice we didn't close above the buy line. Now I do have something, I wanna show you one more thing with a TFM system, but that's gonna come up in a little while. I uh, just wanna breeze through this really quickly because I talked about it in detail last week and a lot of times before, but I've started messing around with the VIX a little bit. And the VIX only matters when it matters, as I've said in prior presentations. But when the VIX gets stretched on a closing basis, 10% or more away from the 10-day simple moving average, it tends to revert back to the mean, and the market tends to rally or sell off, whatever the case may be. 
if the VIX is at low levels, then you tend to get a sell-off. If the VIX is at high levels relative to the moving average, then you tend to get a rally. As I've said, ad nauseum, my problem with short-term trading systems over the last, I guess, five or 10 years, or maybe even longer, is that they do really well until they don't. A pandemic comes along and it kind of mucks things up a little bit. So what I've been focusing on with this type of stuff is the intraday analysis. And I still like to close quite a bit, but I am paying attention to the open and the low. And that's why I have these plotted here. So the yellow is the low. And it was interesting that we the low was below 10%. And I was watching for the market to sell off. Of course, the market did all kinds of stuff today, but it did sell off a little bit from that. I just wanted to point that out. But, but we did rally back to the moving average. And I don't know where we closed today, but we, we kind of reset things for now vis-a-vis where the VIX is. So there's no signal for now. So again, pay attention to plus 10 and minus 10 closing basis, obviously, but if you are doing intraday stuff, maybe pay attention to the intraday readings. Now, this is what I wanted to show you with the TFM 10% system. Now, as I've said before, because it's based on the 50 week closing high, which is right here, this 10% line, which is this closing high less 10%, which I call the buy line, didn't drop for a long, long time. And by accident, I built this lag into the system. It doesn't work great to get you quickly back in a market that's kind of like a V-shaped recovery. But if you get into a prolonged bear market like we've been in, then after 50 weeks, it starts dropping. You see it's been dropping quite a bit. Now, what I did was I put in a line at 100% just so you could see what closing high it's going off, off of. So right here, if you go up to this line and go back a time, you can see that's a closing high, obviously all-time closing high right at the end of 2022. And you can see in more recent times, it's begun to implode a little bit. And that's because we're looking at this week here, okay? And each week that goes by, we're gonna start looking at the next highest level on a closing basis. So next week we'll be looking at this close. So this line will come down. And notice that the moving average is coming, is coming down the price. So when you get these longer term process type of bottoms, and let's hope it's a process bottom, the bank, the banks made new lows today. That's got me a little concerned. And we'll take a look at that in just one second. So I wouldn't rush out and call a bottom just yet. And that guy who screams on TV said, uh, you're planning your funeral if you short the NASDAQ. So that's got me a little nervous. <laughs> anyway, before I get myself in trouble, digress. You can see the buy line is coming down at the price, as is the moving average. So this is kind of a, a inadvertent feature, and or an intended feature, whatever that that it does begin to catch up with price over time. And in bear markets, take time and price. A V-shaped recovery, obvious, obviously, is just a price type of deal, and that's what we had, obviously, in or during the pandemic. And now we're having more of a prolonged type of bear market. But you can see we're now going off of that closing high and then next week it's going to drop down to I guess this right here. Now there is an anomaly I think where it can occasionally go up but I didn't make any adjustments to the system to make sure it always went down. So it's like I, I've left the system in its pure form Maybe one day I might modify it a little bit and see what happens, but I, I thought it would be more important to create something and then walk forward with it in real markets to see how it shakes out longer term. I've known system developers, actually got in a fight with one of them once a little bit, or heated debate, I should say, because I told him that his biggest drawdown was always in front of him, and, and he didn't like that. And it's because when you're designing a system, you're curve fitting a little bit to prior markets. Now, this is a slide I showed in my Trading Simplified show, and it kind of illustrates the problems that we're dealing with as trend followers. Now, the good news is we have on one position and that's it. And, and when I get these 
texts to me from friends and relatives freaking out about the market. It's like, I don't want to tell them that I've been mostly out for a long time. We've taken a few stabs here, got burned on a few of them, made a little bit on one or two, but nothing to brag about, just kind of keeping our head above the water or barely above the water. And we've got one open position to left. And so it's kind of like, well, you know, it's like, they're like, is this it? Is, it, is this the end? I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm a trend follower. I just follow along. And right now, I'm mostly out of the market. Now, if you just kind of draw the zigs and zags, you can see this market for almost a year has been all over the place. And then the other thing I was showing on a closing basis, if you overlay electrocardiogram, you could probably, I started doing this earlier today and I realized I'm just kind of like my ADD had kicked in. I started lining them up with prices, trying to see if I can get a perfect electrocardiogram. And then I realized uh, that I was wasting time a few hours into that exercise of futility. Okay, any questions on anything so far or anything in general? We'll go ahead and open it up. You guys have any stock picks or crypto picks? Go ahead and start asking now because we'll get to the charts here in just a few minutes. All right, a couple of things. I put a request earlier for things to cover in Facebook. Uh, by the way, and I'll mention this again in a few minutes. Facebook group is free, but you have to be qualified and accepted. And the way you get qualified and accepted is become a gold member of DaveLandry.com. That way you have all the courses and you can get up to speed on everything. And then you also have courses that are unlocked over time. And I'll mention that in a minute. Why do you shy away from stocks making new highs? I think what he's talking about is stocks that are strong that have recently pulled back, but super strong. You mentioned that they may be sources of funds, but everybody in the stock is happy. That's true. And I thought trends often last longer than we think. That's also true. Sure, if the indices take off, you're thinking you might be correct, but then again, it could be a winner leaving the gates early. Well, here's my, this is a little counterintuitive on what I normally preach. I normally preach, yeah, you wanna be in the strongest stocks and you're trading those pullbacks. But when you're in a bear market like this, there is a, an issue with some of those stronger stocks. And I still trade them. If you go back and look at the service, there's one that uh, we traded not that long ago that was one of those strong stocks. But as, as a general statement, the reason that concerns me is, take a look at the market, okay? Market was way up here, and now it's kind of all over the place, but we're still in a bear market, right? If you are looking at a stock that looks like that, in a bear market and the market begins to take off sometimes as i say quite often that stock can become a source of fun funds so you got a fund manager and you've got these stocks at low levels whatever's been let's say banks start bottoming out okay and making cup and handles and bow ties and all those other beautiful things and they start looking pretty good well if somebody's in a stronger stock they might sell that stronger stock and go in and buy something at lower levels. So that's what I mean by source of funds. Now, again, it's a little counterintuitive because, you know, but Dave, I thought you preached strength, strength, strength. Yes, you want to go for stronger stocks in general, but something that's been a high flyer and kind of defying gravity for a long time and has recently pulled back and set up, you need to think long and hard about whether or not you want to go after it. Now, on the flip side, let's say the market begins to implode. Well, these stocks at high levels, it kind of becomes the bigger they are, the harder they fall. In fact, especially if they if they sell off hard, just bounce a little bit, they can become wonderful shorts late in the game because it becomes a little bit of last of the Mohicans. And then it becomes a kind of a panic source of funds as opposed to a sector rotation type of source of funds. And I'm going to get to this point in one second, but rarely does a prior leader lead you out of a bear market and i know i've said the story a thousand times but i think it was my first trip to italy i went to the the morning star uh, awards or whatever and any person or fund manager who was running an energy fund looked like a freak of genius because energy prices had shot through the roof and i think bollinger was at the table leaned over and said i bet we don't see one of these guys here next year and i'm sure that came true because energy prices obviously tanked after all this $200 oil talk and everything else. So all those energy stocks just got creamed the next year. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't want to stick with the stock as long as it's moving in your favor, 
we stuck with a coal stock for maybe two years because it was going up the whole time. But eventually, of course, all things end badly, right? All trend trades eventually end badly. It did roll over and we did get stopped out and we did okay with it. But as a general statement, you don't want to chase the, the high flyers in a bear market. Now, again, it's okay to trade them. I'm not saying don't, don't touch them. If you're, if you're going to trade, I, I would be more impressed if you found you a really good setup that was a high flyer than if you were trying to trade something that's kind of choppy and mediocre and looks like electrocardiogram. But just remember that it could be damned if you do and damned if you don't. And it's kind of like you have this bear market kind of looming over your head. And again, if the market really begins to take in earnest, the baby will get the baby will get thrown out with the bathwater, believe me, and that stock is going to get torpedoed. And then the other thing that happens that's a little perverse is the market takes off. You're feeling great. Hey, market's going up. Market's up 3% today. Can't wait to look at my stock. It's going to be up 10%. And then to your amazement, you find the stock down. And again, it's a little perverse, a little counterintuitive, but it's it's kind of a um, anomaly that tends to happen. But don't get too caught up in this. I mean, if you like I said, if you really like a stock, then, then buy it. Just know that you could be subject to these things. Now, ideally, you want to match the pattern to the market. If we're in a rip-roaring bull market, then yes, you'll see me go after a lot of these high flyers like that. And you know, even in more recent times, I've gone after some strong stocks, but usually there's some sort of excitement behind them, like an IPO, like we're long MBLY, and that's kind of yeah, that could be considered a high flyer, but it's also an IPO, which can have this inefficiency and could also trade in lieu of the overall market. These super speculative stocks that are super strong sometimes could trade in lieu of the overall market. So overall market's kind of selling off. Speculative money still flows into these stocks and, and they're not closely tied to the S&P 500. But ideally you wanna match the, the patterns of the market if we stay in this bear market or continue this bear market, let's say we go down and make new lows and all, begin to bottom out. I'm going to be more excited about a bow tie coming off of low levels, maybe a bow tie into banks or biotech or something that's been a little bit beat up than I am for something that's a little bit, that's been doing a little better. And then, you know, look, look at the energies now. The energies are starting to roll over. That's a good example. Again, that's a good example. So the energies have been pretty strong, probably the strongest area throughout this bear market. And now they're beginning to roll over. So it's like, they're kind of like the last of the Mohicans when it comes to rolling over. And, and they're kind of like looking like looking ugly like the market. Now, as I said before, old winners rarely continue as big winners when a market turns back up. What happens is new areas emerge, like a coal company. Who would have thunk it? You know, who would have thought? All right, Crypto Corner. I did have one question here before we hop into the live charts. Can you talk about price times volume and how on the influence of cryptos you're willing to trade? I think I answered this question almost exactly verbatim as this one is, but this one just came in earlier today, four hours ago. I'm pretty sure I did a, a, a video on this, but I'm going to just kind of touch, touch upon some of the highlights here. And he goes on to say that uh, he takes something like Sheeb and he thinks that oh, maybe only a few billion dollars, a few million dollars can move it around. Well, there's always going to be manipulation in the markets, okay? The first thing you need to ask yourself, is this stock or crypto liquid enough for me to get in it? Is it liquid enough to give me a representative sample size when it comes to human emotions and technical analysis, okay? So if you're looking at something that's super, 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 super thin, then you might not have enough players to get excited and push it higher. Something like Sheba has bazillions of shares traded so i wouldn't worry about sheeb and in his particular example he was saying well on the third or fourth of february it it seems like one trader or a group of traders could push it one way or the other well that's actually a good thing okay provided it's liquid enough for you to get into it and provided again you get a representative sample of enough people to make technical analysis work enough emotions of the people out there then don't worry so much about whether or not you think somebody can manipulate it. All stock prices are manipulated. I sort of listened to some book, I'm trying to think of the name of it. 
and um, it escapes me. I, I don't know if I'll make it through the whole book or not. It's basically a book about how all these hedge funds manipulate markets. And it's like, you know, it's it wasn't a big shock. <laughs> but the good news is, if you could figure out if a market is manipulated, if you could figure out how it's being manipulated by following the trend, then you can get along, you could jump in with the manipulation. And let me let me give you an example of that from a while back. Uh, this gentleman started emailing me, and the emails got progressively longer. And after they got to, to about five or ten pages, I just couldn't keep up. <laughs> and finally, I think I had to shut him down or whatever. He kind of got the drift. But he felt like they were out to get him in the Forex market. Well, the Forex market is pretty big. I doubt seriously they were out to get him. And he kept trying to send me or sending me all this, what he thought was proof about the markets being manipulated. Well, first of all, yeah, all markets are manipulated. Somebody years ago once said that prices don't move, prices are moved or something along those lines. So you kind of get the idea. The thing is, figure out which way the manipulation is pushing the stock and get along jump along the trend and that's what we do as a trend follower so we'll pull up crypto now and i'll show you a couple things i look at when it comes to volume and uh again if you would go would or go in and go back a few uh weeks on my youtube channel i couldn't find it right before the show i could probably find uh you an example okay so let me shift gears here and let's um Let's hop into crypto. Okay, so as I've said before, one thing I like to do, especially if the market's real strong, obviously, is I start by relative strength and within reason look to jump into some of these stocks that are that are, are crypto pairs that are strong. Now, this is a little bit extreme, obviously. Maybe if I saw it earlier today, I'd have been more excited about it, but it's already kind of like done its deal. It's already shot over 100% and come back in. But the first thing I look for, without measuring volume whatsoever, is I look for these long tails. And usually that's a, no pun intended, a telltale sign that you're dealing with a thin market, okay? You see this right here, I instantly would just toss that out because, yeah, it's strong right now, but look at these crazy tails in here. Very hard to trade something like that. So that's the first thing I look for. And let me see if I can find an extreme example for you. That mass looked pretty good, huh? Look at that. Nice little rally out of this kind of crazy shot up, pull back, come back in. Okay, here's one. Uh, Yoonbound, whatever. Notice these big long tails again. So that's probably really, really thin. Now, the other thing I do, and I'm not going to pull it up on the fly. Maybe I can. Let's see. I don't know if I could pull it up without showing anything i'm not supposed to show <laughs> but when you're in your future screen or your cash trading screen you can look at the the market and if you hover over the bids and the asks you can get a dollar value on on how much is available okay so let's take a look at this dusk real quick so I, I wouldn't worry too, too much about it. I mean, if you're only trading a few thousand dollars in these, and I wouldn't, I really wouldn't bet the form, then as long as you could find decent volume and look at the bid ask spreads and see what's uh, what's the amount in dollars. Let's see if I could do it this, um, I don't know if I could do it on the fly here. Oh, it's not giving it to me because I'm not logged in. But basically, you want to look at the bid and look at the ask, and you want to see what's out there, and it'll give you a dollar value on these things, and you can decide whether or not it's liquid enough for you to trade. Now, I would recommend, once you do get in, to put in a limit order to make sure that you're you're getting at it profit targets, just in case it is kind of thin. I I can't tell you, as a friend of mine used to say, you could tell me. Uh, but I can't tell tell you how many times I've I've had these things shoot up and I forgot I forgot to put in my limit order, so I'm not getting I'm not getting that fill. So, but I think as long as you're trading fairly small size, I wouldn't get too excited about. It. Let me see if I can do this without getting into trouble or anything. 
Um, you know, like Bitcoin just came up. I mean, I could see obviously thousands and thousands of dollars that are being traded on Bitcoin. But if you take something thinner like Dusk, which is still pretty thick, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so there's there's an offer just above the market for 500, 4,000, 1,500, and then there's bids for 500, 1,000, 1,500, so 2,000, there's plenty, there's 4,000. So especially as you go a little deeper, further out, 4,000. So there's thousands and thousands of dollars outside of this market, okay? On the bid and the ass. So I think it's worth trading something like that. Actually, looks pretty good now. I gotta watch myself. I trade too much during the shows. <laughs> so I know I'm not giving you a definitive answer, but if you just kind of, again, look at the chart itself, and if it has a, an inordinate amount of tails, especially if they're more recent, then I'd be really, really careful. And then again, like this one right here, look at the, with all the tails on this, C A R D. Pull it up in a brokerage account, see what happens. And you guys start asking about individual pairs if you want. I'll be happy to look at those. Yeah, you pull it up in a broker, brokerage account. Like if we, here, you could drill down too. Let's drill down to a, look at a 30 minute in my brokerage. You look at all, this is illiquid, okay? So if you see something looks like that, stay away. Let's take a look at like that mask. And again, I'm not giving you a definitive answer, but as long as it's enough to get your trades off, I wouldn't obsess too much. So you can see there's a lot of trading in here and there's not a whole lot of price vacuums or areas where no trading took place whatsoever. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Mac Daddy in here. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and then let's drill down to, we'll take a look at what's going on. So Bitcoin came back from the dead, which I found really interesting. And by the way, I was talking about this earlier on Facebook, just as a side note, GBTC, the premium's coming off on that a little bit. It still has about a 38% premium to Bitcoin. And remember, GBTC at one, one point, I'm sorry, discount to Bitcoin. So in theory, and this is where you get in trouble in markets, in theory, in theory, you could buy GBTC and it's worth 40% the, the more than it's worth now. Well, why is it not worth 40% more? Well, because there is a lawsuit with the SEC on them trying to become an ETF. Uh, I think when they become an ETF, you're going to see that premium close, that spread cl close quite a bit. The pr Bitcoin premiums close or GBTC's discount uh, rise lessen, I should say. Let me just rewind it. <laughs> You'll see that discount, discount drop from around 40% to closer to where the cash market is. I doubt it will ever go to a premium again, even if it becomes an ETF. And the reason there is because an asset in control, that asset that's being controlled by someone else, as opposed to like a cash market, is always going to have a discount to it. So like gold funds sometimes will have a discount to them because humans can and will uh, make mistakes and they might not always do the best things in the world, uh, exercise best practices. So let's take a look at... Ethereum real quick. Uh, that's Ethereum to Bitcoin by accident, but you can see Ethereum basis Bitcoin is not doing so hot. That looks to me like that would be a short. So you want to be short Ethereum and long Bitcoin based on that. Let's see if we got the regular Ethereum in. Oh, there it is. Ethereum on its own is doing okay. But for now, if you wanted to be in one or the other, then maybe you want to be in Bitcoin. And again, if we look at the percent change on these, and this is something that, as I talk about quite often, when the markets are really cranking, you could just go through these, like this this one here, you could just buy these things as they're making new highs, okay? So that is a market that I'll buy into new highs, just for what it's worth. Okay, any any individual questions on the crypto? All right, we're gonna go ahead and shift gears and start talking about individual stocks all right let's talk about s&p 500 and here's the thing even ludicrous would say this market's ludicrous 
I mean, let's just take a look at today's action. Here's a 15 minute chart. We kind of lapped higher, we ran up, we sold off. We went straight up, we went straight down, and then we went kind of all over the place. Fed day, obviously, we faked out to the upside, we imploded, we took off again, we took off again, we imploded, we took off again, we imploded, we imploded, we took off, we imploded, we imploded. It's just absolutely crazy. So what we're seeing on a intraday basis is kind of a microcosm of what's happening longer term. So it's a little concerning, obviously. And uh, by the way, I didn't do a, an intraday update. It's not good. So <laughs> that's one reason I didn't get around to doing one. Um, I'll pick that up uh, next week. One of you guys who's a pretty good day trader texted me earlier, and I told him that I was still struggling with that a bit after printing money for a while, of course. And uh, he said that my classical training as a trend follower is actually hurting me now because the markets are so choppy and he seems to be doing okay because he's in and out in and out in and out kind of like the the rag going for the cocaine but that's another story um and he has a gift about it he can scout whereas that's something that, that i'm really not interested in doing but it seems like it's impossible lately or nearly impossible for me to catch any decent trends because you don't materialize so i'm sitting around waiting for ipts to get hit and that doesn't seem to be happening at least not as often as it used to. So S&P 500, I'm looking so hot. Let's get the moving averages in here. And nothing magical about the 200 or the 50, but they can, and can be the keyword in that sentence, help to keep it in the right side of the market. And you can see we're just above the 200 in the S&P 500. Longer term, kind of all over the place, as I've been saying, almost one year of no forward progress. While I'm down here, let's touch upon a couple of things. Silver's been pretty strong as of late. You can see it's been kind of going straight up. Somebody asked me if this is a witch hat. And no, because a witch hat's more of a something like in a longer term downtrend where you have the sharp retrace. And this is kind of like not that high of levels. It sold off and then it almost retraced 100%. So that's that's not a witch hat type of pattern. Let's take a look at bonds real quick. So bonds are kind of stuck in this wide and loose range. It's good that they're off their lows. That means rates have come down a little bit, but they're still all over the place. And I wouldn't get too excited about bonds just yet. Top looks like it's still in place in the dollar. Um, that's kind of a witch hat, but it, it did take out this prior high in here, but you can see it rallied up and then it got thwarted at the 200 day moving average and it rolled right back over. So dollar looks like it's still on its way down. Let's take a look at retail. We're down here. You can see retail's pushing down towards its old lows in here. You know, maybe it'll make a bottom. So maybe this will be one of those areas that fund managers sell the stronger stocks, sell their energy stocks, and then they buy retail when retail begins to rally off of the lows. And maybe some more technology-based areas will begin to rally off the lows. The after a bear market, value becomes momentum, momentum becomes value sometimes. So that could be something that, that might be happening if we ever bottom out or when we bottom out. We'll bottom out sooner or later. The NASDAQ actually still looks okay. I mean, it's all over the place. I certainly don't want to rush out and trade it. But we do have Landry Light above the 50 simple moving average, okay? And so far, so good, but it's just all over the place. So I wouldn't get too excited about it if it continues, unless it continues to rally and make some more than marginal new highs. Here's the, the rub. Take a look at the Rusty. The Rusty's looking pretty ugly in here. The Rusty looked like it was bottoming out for a long time. And as I was, as I said during this entire process, it's a process, right? It's not like an event type of bottom where it's like, you have this spike low and it goes straight up from there. It's just taking forever to bottom out. The fact that we made new lows today and the other indices were up a little, that certainly scores as a bummer. So that's not a good thing, especially being a, a broader based index like that. Gold, the commodity, so far so good. It's, it's not too far from these multi-year highs. Pretty impressive run there. Maybe some gold stocks will set up for us soon. Energies, as I alluded to earlier, this is kind of a, not a perfect example of source of funds, but 
this is the strongest area out there somewhat longer term, right? And then now it's beginning to break down. So it becomes kind of the bigger they are, the harder they fall. But Dave, you were trading some energies a while back. Yeah, I was, because they still looked okay. And it was what the database was offering. But there's always a chance that you're you're the last one in or something like that. And that was kind of the whole point I was making earlier. Metals and mining have rolled over in here for the most part. So they're looking a little questionable. Maybe some of those gold stocks, like I said earlier, will make a comeback. We'll see. See if we can get rid of some of the stuff in here. Okay, that help? Yeah, I got to find my Q&A window. I don't know how to get that back. Ah, here it is. I knew if I poked around long enough, I'd find it. Dave, you stink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, joking. Doesn't the rusty lead out of a bear market? Well, I thought it was. You know, um, sometimes, sometimes it does. Sometimes these these uh, smaller cap stocks will lead you out of a bear market, and that's what I was. I hate to use the word hope, but that's what I was kind of hoping for for quite some time. When day after day in the service, I'm like, well, we got this complex head and shoulders bottom, and now now we're back up to the 200, and like, nope, just kidding, we're back below. So you have to believe in what you see and not what you're you believe in the past or we're trained to believe in the past hello rick hello rogers okay let's take a look at a couple of other areas in here and you guys want to talk about open it up for individual stocks please do hey brian now i can see everybody's little comments <laughs> fortunately it's, it's just friendlies tonight so nobody tell me i stink but uh i certainly haven't been doing fantastic lately given this uh the conditions the good news is, position-wise, I've been sitting in my hands a lot, uh, but that doesn't mean I haven't been firing off some unnecessary intraday trades. So I need to back off on that a little, but we'll talk about that next week. All right, banks, this is a bummer, man, because, uh, <laughs> man, notice we closed at brand new multi-month lows, maybe even one-year lows today, go all the way back in time. We're at the lowest level since, oh, geez, 2021, okay? So that is a uh, no bueno, right? Next level support is down here, just for S and G's. How far is that? Round numbers. That's another twenty percent, I think. That's quite a bit. It's a big drop. If we lost another twenty percent, that would not be pretty. So that's got me a little concerned. Just no support in here. I sure would like to see a bounce so we could fire off a couple of shorts in that area. Not that I want them to go down, but if that's all that's offered, then I'll be forced to take it. As I was telling my service peeps tonight and lately, anything financial related seems to be getting dragged down by the banks. And as I tried to say earlier in the service too, it's kind of like throwing a pebble in the pond. There's going to be a ripple effect where it goes through the financials and then it goes through the insurance and, and then it starts dragging down other areas, maybe some areas that are non-correlated. So that could be kind of kind of ugly uh that was uh insurance as you can see has rolled over in here had a pretty ugly day today drugs have been doing so hot as you can see just kind of pulling back after the recent slide in here you know this might be a, a good example uh, that george was asking about source of funds okay strongest area out there not that long ago back in december of 2022 was drugs in spite of the market right and where are they now they are down well, it's only 4%, so it's not the end of the world, but you can see they have dropped precipitously since then. Let's see what's this right here. That might be a little bit more. Why is it not telling me? But you get the idea. They've kind of rolled over in here. Biotechnology has been a little bit weaker than drugs all along, and you can see it's back below its 200. I mean, all these areas, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that they're up and down. You know, it's electric cardiogram. Boop, 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 boop. It's been two hours or more. Maybe I could overlay my electric cordogram on that, right? So a lot of ugliness out there. Software kind of was taken off, kind of stalled out. It's it's okay on a relative strength basis, a little bit stronger, but it's still electric cordogram. And as a trend follower, you really don't be trying to follow that, believe me. Now, one exception out there that is strong and looking okay is the semiconductors. And I always like when semiconductors kind of lead us out or just lead in general. I find semiconductors is good. Um, 
what's the word? Not arbiter, but um, a good harbinger, if that's a word, of, of things. And I like the semiconductors kind of match, kind of like the Dow theorists, like the transports. I like the semiconductors. Craig saying large cap tech. Um, FNGU. Yeah, so large cap tech might be leading right now. So we'll pay attention to that. I hear you. Um, Fang Yu looking okay in here. I wouldn't hold on this one long because it's leveraged. LSCC, you're saying large cap semis. Yeah, LSCC. Yeah, that's kind of doing pretty good in here. So we'll just have to see what happens in the semis. And I don't think the semis, the semis are still at lower levels coming up. So I wouldn't see them so much as a source of funds as opposed to a new leader emerging, okay? Whereas if you had a sector that was in a longer term trend, like the energies and now beginning to roll over, I don't think that's gonna be a new leader, okay? So yeah, good point on the, on the large cap. Brian is in ACLS. Yeah, let's open it up for individual stocks. I think I've kind of beat the dead horse in the market. Yeah, that looks kind of interesting. This was one that we were talking about a while back and I was a little concerned about it being like a source of funds type of stock, kind of the theme of tonight's show or part of tonight's show. It just, it's at these nosebleed levels. And in general, if we were in a rip roaring bull market and this TKO would have been maybe like back here a little bit, I might have gotten excited and been all over this stock, but uh, it looks okay. Uh, if long, if you're long as you are, just um, trail a stop higher for sure. All right. Any stocks you guys want me to look at? Any questions? Quite a bunch tonight. Of course, I killed my questions earlier. <laughs> well, while we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Going once, going twice. All right, everybody have, everybody here, I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow on Facebook. Everybody else have a fantastic weekend. And uh, these shows are posted. They will be on YouTube tomorrow. Thank you so much. And may the trend be with you. You're welcome.